Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I am the Sam, the bean is running around in the background as usual, and today it's been one week since Growing Together was released, so I figure it is high time we build a little starter together. This is a three bedroom, one level starter home for 17,000 simoleons or less, or more, depending on of course how you decorate. So we'll go over the floor plan, landscaping, and furnishing tips for filling spaces cheaply, and that's about all I have to say about that. Let's get building. I'm going to be building on 23 eucalyptus lane, which is 30 wide by 20 deep, but if you were on a lot where it's 20 wide and 30 deep, um, you'll basically just follow along and then instead of putting the yard to the side, you'll put it at the back. Anyway, everything will just be rectangles today, so that's super handy, but I'm going to start with a little porch here, which is going to be two tiles deep and five tiles wide. Beyond that, we'll do a four by five living room space and then a four by six kitchen and dining. This space right here will be a bathroom. Right next to it will be one bedroom, and then we'll have a second bedroom. This will be a hallway, and finally, a four by four bedroom at the front. You can copy and place the same deck right on the back here, and there's your shell. Of course, we do want this on a bit of a foundation. Now, the higher your foundation, the more you do have to pay for stairs, uh, so you don't want it too high, but to keep that sort of craftsman bungalow vibe that we're going with, we do want it to have a bit of a foundation. Next up, let's talk about the roof. This is probably going to be the most complicated part, so if you don't care as much about eaves clipping, you could just throw out a couple of gables, but if you do care, I'm going to start with a gabled roof running this direction right here, and then a second gable, which will actually line up with the edge on this side, but stop one tile in in this direction. Now this gable we can just leave at the default height, but to get everything to blend nicely we are going to have to pitch this one down about two little ticks there, and then of course pull it in so that it lines up. So these are the two gables we'll be working with. Take the slightly shorter gable and copy and place it on the front right here, as well as on the back. Of course we will fix this little eave situation here, so push your roof in and hold shift to just adjust that one eave. Copy place and pull in these eaves. Nice and tidy. Next, copy this one and just scale it all the way down so that it fits on this little space here. I'm not too worried about this eave piece right here since it's such a short um, little distance, but if you did want to fix it, you'll do the same thing where you're going to push your roof all the way out, hold shift to pull that eave in. Of course, I will have to shrink this one down too. There we go. And then copy, place, pull the roof back in and push these eaves in just like that. Now we'll roof the deck portion. I'm going to use a half-hipped roof piece, which by default places without eaves, so make sure you pull those out one, and then we'll just pull this over and pitch it down. Now there is a little bit of a gap right here, so to fix that, we'll copy and place the exact same roof piece, but push the eaves back in, and then pull the roof into that main gable there. So now the gaps are all fixed. We have a nice little joining uh, right there, and there's that front deck roofed. Now on the back, I'm actually just going to use a half gabled roof. Now when this one gets pitched down, it clips in a bit, so we'll just push it back, and then you can use the alt key to very carefully adjust your roof so that it lines up a little bit better, just like that. Make sure this is all lined up, which it is, and there is your roof. I'll run through the pieces one more time here as I recolor them, because as always, never stick with the default shingles. So I'm going to grab these, and we have two half hipped roof pieces stacked at the front here, and then we have one, two, three, four, five in total, lo slightly lower pitched uh, gable roof pieces in this direction, just the two default pitched gables in this direction, and a half gable finishing off the back deck. Finally, I do like using the square roof trim, so I'm going to use that one. However, uh, this is not a build like a nerd, so I will definitely not yell at you for using uh, whatever you want. Speaking of using whatever you want, from here on out, I am going to be using only the base game and growing together packs. However, you are of course free to use whatever packs you have. I'm going to go ahead and use these sturdy stairs at the front here. Make those too wide and always delete the walls underneath the stairs, especially if you're going for a budget build. Uh, they cost the same as a full wall. It's ridiculously expensive. And I'll place another set of those stairs at the back and again, delete the little wall under them. Next up, siding. Now it's traditional for craftsman bungalows and a craftsman bungalow cottage, which is technically what this one would be, uh, to have siding and stone. We actually have a new stone option, which is fantastic. I actually really like this one. I don't think I could say I like it better than Seasons, but like it's up there. I like the stone a lot. Now I'm just going to use this to sort of highlight this one little portion right here, as well as use the new foundation. So all of that will match very nicely. Growing Together also came with a new siding option, this Suburban Dream siding, which 
yeah, it's just $4 like everything else, which is fantastic. I'm going to be running with white today, uh, but there are a lot of actually really fun colors in here. This green I will be using. I'm obsessed with that like light green color, um, and I'm a sucker for bright red as well. But today I'm just going to go with a nice, just a nice white and place that on the remaining portions of the house. Now I'm not going to use seasons, but if you do have season, the craftsman fence is one of my absolute favorite fences and it's actually not that expensive um, as opposed to the good craftsperson fences, which just came with this new pack. If you don't have either of these or you just don't like the look of this one, the next one I'd probably go with would be the wooden horizontal fencing because uh, it still has that sort of craftsman influence um, without being either of these, I guess. I'm going to draw this fence into the front right here. And if you ever decide you want your fence color to change, all you have to do is select the new color and then use this little replace fence tool and it will automatically replace the fence that exists and you don't have to redraw it. Once again, Seasons Columns, fantastic and significantly cheaper than the new Craftsperson column. However, I am not using Seasons. I just wanted to highlight it there in case you guys wanted to use it. So I'm going to be using these columns. And it looks like there's actually a soft white and a bright white. I have a bit of a mix right now. I'm going to fix that and just go for all the soft white. There are also a few new front door options. I'm going to be using the slightly smaller one, um, although there's a more modern new door, which is really cool, and this one, which I will definitely be using at some point, just not today. I'm choosing blue as my accent color, but again, there are lots of fun colors, uh, but I'm doing the white with sort of the blue inside. I'll be using the double windows in the same white frame with the blue inside, which has a really nice, simple craftsman pattern, which is fantastic, and place that right in the middle here. It's well framed by the fences and columns, and I think that's really cute. I'm also going to put a window here and in the middle of these two rooms, the kitchen, which we might have to raise in a few minutes. And if we go inside, I'm also going to place it right here. As long as we're inside, I'll make sure the windows are all actually the same height, which they are not currently. There we go. Uh, this one, I'm more concerned about lining up with the door. And since it's really framed out by the columns, it doesn't matter as much that it's a slightly different height, uh, but the rest of them, I do want to be a little bit higher. And we're going to use this tiny new window in the bathroom. I actually really like this window. I'm excited about that one. Now there aren't any sm like super small windows. With I mean, there's this one, but like there aren't any small square windows with this pack, which I'm a little bit disappointed with. Uh, but if I use this one in this swatch, it's really close and it just gives that little sort of finishing detail that you kind of need. Now for the back door, if you wanted to go any more modern direction, you could definitely grab this door, which is quite cheap. Very nice for the whole starter thing, but I'm trying to keep mine a little bit more cottagey. So I'm going to go with the marine biologist's choice odd name for a door, but whatever. And for the flooring on the outside decks, I'm going to go with white to sort of match the rest of it. Oops, forgot a fence back here. But then the floor you choose for inside. If you're going for more traditional uh, craftsman cottage, probably a mid to dark tone wood, um, or you could just carry the white through if you wanted more of a beachy cottage. I really like a nice warm wood tone, so I'm going to go with that. Now for the inside wallpapers, truly I would love to do something that has the sort of crown molding and baseboards, however that can get really expensive really really quickly. Um, so I'm actually going to end up going with some of the white instead. And I'm going to use this swatch for the kitchen and dining space because we have a new tile and it's a really similar color. Not like the exact same, but it's really really close. Or no, I lied. It's this swatch in the basics. Basic standards, this swatch is the one that I'm using in here because it is very similar to that uh, new tile color. I'm also going to be placing that tile in the bathroom. Now how I'm going to lay these out is I'm going to furnish these as a main bedroom, a nursery, and a child's bedroom. Of course, how you decide to furnish is totally up to you, but just to like give you something to work off of that fits within a starter budget, that's what I will be doing today. And about now, I guess I should start adding some lights. Now with this super subtle saucer light, it is 50 simoleons, which is one of the cheaper lights, and you really only need about one per room which is a huge money saver. Really, I probably don't even need one in the hallway since we're going to add an arch. And I'm going to put the light for the kitchen over on this side, but then I really do want to integrate some of the new lighting as well. And this one's really cute. So we're going to put this right here, sort of right in front of the window there to be right over the dining table. Now for interior doors, I recommend matching to your wood tone. Um, you don't like have to have to, but I definitely prefer doing that. Or at least as close as you can, you know, it is, it is The Sims 4. Since I'm putting two doors in this hallway, I'm going to place one normally and then flip the other one with my comma key. So that'll just look a little bit better. And then we can of course put the doors around the rest of the hallway as well. 
For this archway right here, you could grab the keystone style arch or even the arch door, which has a little transom above it. Well, glassed in transom. And then here we want another archway, but we have a couple of options. We could stick with the keystone arch, which is pretty narrow, um, or we could go for one of the wider arches, the new well-crafted archway, which has gotten some mixed reviews, but overall I think it's a good addition to the game. Or to save on money, we could actually grab the craftsperson spandrel in a white that most closely matches our trim and sort of do that. Uh, we will grab a couple of columns, check to make sure those aren't clipping in anywhere, and there's like a nice wide sort of archway between the rooms. Now if you don't want it to be quite this wide, totally understandable, you can just bring it in a little bit and replace these with walls. Now I've noticed that using these columns tends to actually sort of glitch out the lighting a bit, so I'm not going to end up using them for this build, but if you don't mind as much, go for it. Another great option would be, of course, again, Seasons. It's a little bit chunky as well, but it uh, doesn't bug out the lighting, so. There aren't really any good craftsman style arches in the base game, which is a bit of a bummer, so I'm probably just going to have to go with this one instead. Um, or wait, is it the spandrel causing the lighting to bug out? Hmm. Well, all right then. Something, something in this build is making the light bug out. I thought it was the column, but now it might be the spandrel. So I'm just going to go with an arch. I'll just use the wider version of this one, which is a bit on the pricey side, but it's worth it uh, to not have the lighting freak out. So I'm going to put that there. And at this point, we could do a quick little price check. You should be under 10,000 at this point, um, depending on your wallpapers and stuff that can all add up really quickly. I'm sitting at about 7,700 which for a three bedroom shell isn't that bad. Now, of course, these are tiny bedrooms and re in real life, I don't think these would even be up to code, but I don't care. Let's step back outside for a minute and talk about the yard. I'm going to put a fence around it because that just seems like a good move, but if you're trying to save money or whatever, make the fenced area smaller or just don't fence it in at all. You can also always use debug fences, but this is a debug free build. I will be using move objects, which I will let you know when I'm turning that on and why. Um, and I will be resizing some things as well to save on money, but no debug. Uh, no crazy funky cheats or anything. So anyway, I'm just going to do a nice little fenced in yard area about like this. Also, if you notice that your fence is placing up on a foundation, just start drawing away from your house and bring it in. That should solve those issues and there's my little fenced in yard. And again, if you're building on a lot that looks like this, you just take this area and rotate it around uh, so it's in the backyard instead of having a side yard. Next up, let's do the kitchen and bathroom. Now we do have a new tower shower tub combo, which I am so happy about. We have so few of those um, and it's honestly really sleek. It's really nice looking. I would love this in real life, but it is very, very expensive. We can do a whole bedroom for that. So instead, I do my best to never do the absolute cheapest thing in a starter and always go one up and it usually works pretty well. So we're not using the postmodern shower, going with the unicorn dream shower because uh, this is slightly less likely to break and that is a big deal. Same with the sink, which I'm going to go with the black faucet option to sort of tie things together which reminds me i think this yes this has a couple of options with the black trim as well and then the toilet can just fit right in there yes i do use the cheapest toilet i don't find that it breaks any more than this one um it's uncomfortable but like who cares i'm also going to put in a little toddler potty and if you check the grid your sims can walk anywhere where there is a quarter of a tile uh so this is plenty of space for everyone to get through and you should be able to place all of these without turning on move objects. And in the kitchen, going to use the cheapest counter, of course. We're going to place two right here in the middle and then click on the gear icon if you haven't already to open up the sort of counter selection and grab that inner corner. We're just going to put that right there. Cheap fridge, but make it white and cheap stove, but make it white. If you do want to level up your appliances, that's cool. Um, I'm trying to save money so I can get a swing set in the yard though. So that's why I'm going to be using these. And finally, just go ahead and grab a sink. Now, if you want to do cheap landscaping, a great way to do that is through resizing objects. So you can take a small tree like the elm tree or the hawthorn tree, which are both pretty cheap, and then just use your bracket keys to scale them up. So now we have two trees for a total of 65 simoleons. Now for shrubs, you could of course use the 35 simoleon or the 45 simoleon hedgerow, uh, which is pretty cheap. And you can scale that down if you wanted to, to just sort of nestle it in there. I do have move objects turned on. Um, if you would like to turn that on as well, you can do control shift C and then just type BB dot move objects. You'll get a confirmation. Mine says it is off right now, which means I can still place these plants, but I can't put them as close to the house as I want. So BB dot move up, move objects is always recommended for landscaping because you can put them right up next to the house. And if we page down and check it out, nothing's clipping in, perfect. 
Another way to get cheap flowers and shrubs is to actually grab the perennial flowers in a swatch that you like and then scale those up and they look like flowering shrubs. Beautiful. If we do another price check, we are at 11046 Now for a single sim, you typically want to keep your housing budget for um, a starter home at 17000 or less because that leaves 3000 for purchasing a lot and, you know, like food or whatever. So 17000 is our top for today. However, if you're building this home for two sims, uh, you can add an extra 2000 onto that. So then you could build all the way up to about 19000 and that will still leave 3000 simoleons for purchasing a lot, um, cooking food at the beginning all that stuff. So now we're getting into the sort of opinionated part we're going to be furnishing. But before we move in there, if this has been helpful, if you appreciate having a little starter to build all for your very own, let me know by leaving a like. Basically what that does for the YouTube algorithm is it lets YouTube know that they found the correct audience and they know to share it with more audience members like you. Plus it lets me know that this was a good video and I should make more like this in the future. Anyway, on to the interior. I'm back in the floor section because one of the biggest things that can make a huge difference in a room but also cost a lot of money is a rug. But you can make custom rugs for essentially free since you have to have flooring anyway with the carpet. So I'm going to start with carpet and I'm going to make a little square here and a little rectangle like this. I'm also going to make a three by three square in this room and now we have the start of three rugs. You could just leave it like this, however I like adding a little bit of a pattern. Here are some of my favorites. You can start with just a couple of additional colors and make like a little sort of squares option which is fun or you can hit Control F and get quarter tiles to make much more fun patterns. I'll turn the grid on here so you can follow along if you like but I'm going to make a basket weave pattern here which is going to start like this, and then I'm going to grab that same green and make stripes running this way as well. If I turn the grid back off, it kind of looks like a cool rug, uh, but it's not, it's just carpet, which means it's free. Another fun one is to just sort of do triangles facing each other like this. That one's pretty quick and easy. And by using the same colors in each one of your rugs, that can really help bring the whole build sort of together. So there are three rugs, Look like they came in a set, probably got them at, I don't know, where do you buy rugs? Are they at Ikea? I don't know. My point is, free rugs, huge money saver, and they really help break up the floor and you don't just have to have plain old wood everywhere. Next up, dining room. Now this is a family home, so I am going to be using one of the 2 by one tile tables, but that doesn't mean they have to be expensive. I can just use the simplicity dining table like this, and some of these little chairs. Now I'm going to place a spare chair off to the side because I think it's funny, since we have the option for friends and family to come stay now, and I'm going to grab a little high chair here as well. Oops. So there's my dining table, and if I didn't have the rug, um, it would sort of blend right into the ground, which is why you want a rug, uh, but you can also get rugs for free. I'm a, obviously a huge fan of the free rugs. On to the next free rug room, the living room. Now there are some really decent cheap couches in the game. If you have eco lifestyle, this is one of my personal favorites. There's also this one from City Living, but I'm going to be using the Mega Sofa from the base game today. And again, with objects on, you can use Alt to sort of scooch things right up into the corner, which can help save space. Now for a nice little sort of table at the end here. Again, lots of great options if you're using something other than the base game that are still pretty cheap, but I am just sticking with the base game, so I'm going to use this one and let's see if I can find the right swatch. There we go. And just nestle that right on in there. Now TVs are pretty expensive. I mean, you can get this one for 500 or you can get a little speaker for 290, which still helps build dancing skills, movement skills, um, promotes fun and all that stuff. It's a lot cheaper than TV. There's also this one, but it doesn't like slot on a surface, so I don't like using it. And to keep the family vibes of this home, I'm also going to grab the little infant playmat, which I found once. There it is. This is another thing that comes with lots of cute little swatches. Uh, by the way, if you like to cycle through swatches like I'm doing right now, you just use the plus and minus keys on your number pad. Fishies. So I'm going to put that down and a couple of cheap toys, you know, for the kiddos. Speaking of kiddos, I think I'm also going to add like a little kid's chair over here. This should leave plenty of open space for your family to move, do activities, teach skills and things sort of in the middle of the floor here. This looks like my living room. Tiny bit of space for the adults, lots of space for the kid to play. And then for the main bedroom, don't even bother going with the cheap bed. Your sims get so uncomfortable so fast. Use the varnish bed or the killer queen double bed. They are a little bit more expensive, but they're really not bad. They're still under a thousand and they just, they're so much better. We do have this new bed as well, but again, it's a thousand and it's just, it's too much for my little starter home. Now for dressers, um, we do have the really cheap ones, which are the kids dressers. Honestly, some of these swatches aren't really that bad. Like this one isn't too bad, but it is pretty big. So I'm going to pay 
a significant amount more, I guess, uh, to get a skinnier dresser to make sure that my sims have plenty of room to get to both sides of the bed. Uh, now, technically, scooching the scooching bug has been fixed, so your sims should be able to share a bed even if it's in the corner. However, it sounds like for some of our console friends, that is not the case. So that bedroom is complete. We'll go back and talk about uh, decorations in just a second here, but next let's move on to the nursery. Now the nursery is going to be probably the most expensive room, um, just because again, I want this space to be 100% ready for whatever family needs to move in, which means you're of course going to add a little bassinet and a crib. Can these be the same color? Not really. Okay, what if we do blue? Do you have blue? I guess that will have to do. Okay, um, so we're going to do that and also a changing table. Necessary? I guess not, but like incredibly handy. Uh, and any trash can can actually slot to the side here. So this one is a hundred, kind of expensive, or you can just use one of the little ones, which is a lot cheaper. And you still have this little corner space open for a blurfy, a uh, shrunk down dollhouse, whatever you feel like your little kid needs, or just, you know, some space. We also have the child room here. Now the children's beds are uncomfortable for adults, but uh, they're really super cheap and the kids don't mind. So definitely wanna go with that. I'm going to go with purple because it's fun and use alt to sort of scooch it up against the wall. I don't like that they're so far away from the wall by default, it's weird. Now to set mine up, we already have a dresser in the house, so we don't need another one. However, we do need a bookshelf and I thought a little night table with a bookshelf on it would be perfect. And of course we need one of the art tables. Now, of all the packs to not add another art table, I'm shocked that they chose this one because we've been complaining about the insane number of art tables for a while. And they listened, but for like the family pack. <laughs> anyway, I'm trying to not complain too much. I just keep finding new things that I'm like, well, that's weird. Now I am actually going to add a second door out to the back here. It acts as a window, an extra way to get outside, um, especially since if you just lock the front door, the kids can pretty much only use the backyard. Seems reasonable to me. Also, that would make it a little bit easier for this room to sort of grow into a teen room as the kid ages. Also, if you ever want to expand this home, you can just sort of make the rooms all a little bit larger, but keep the same general floor plan and it will, it'll still work fine. It'll just be a little bit more expensive. So our bases are covered. We can cook, we can clean, we can eat, wash dishes, use the bathroom. We have multiple skill and activity items. So now it comes down to decorations and what you really want most for your family. I'm going to be using minimal decorations inside so that I can uh, hopefully still get a swing set in and stay under that 17,000. However, I will show you guys again some tips for decorating on the cheap. So if we pop over to decorations and go to the paintings and posters tab, we have these new hodgepodge photo collage frames. I am super happy that we have these and they're free, which means all I have to do is put them on the wall. It just makes things uh, feel a little bit more homey and a little bit more decorated. So I'm going to add a few of those, holding alt to make it centered in the space. I forgot to put a window on this wall, so I'm gonna do that. Just pretend that I didn't forget. This is like literally a changing table mirror. They're just a fun little mirror that you stick right up next to your changing table. Oftentimes it's not even actually glass, uh, but it gives your kids something to look at um, to distract themselves while you are changing their blowout. So yeah, here's a changing table mirror that we finally have a changing table for. Fantastic. I also saw under the wall decorations, oops, that we have this new item, the relics of a creative childhood, which are super cute and they're only 10 simoleons. So you can add those to sort of like a little craft area there, brings the space together, you know. Now to help this feel more like an entry space, I'm going to grab this row of coat hooks, this great wall mirror, which I will raise by using the nine key to be about the same height as the coats, uh, and then use alt to center it, and then go into surfaces and grab this, the immaculate shelf. And I can again use alt to sort of get it where I want it. Uh, but altogether that sort of dictates, right, that this is like this is an entry area. Um, and then just, you know, a vase of flowers or a box of tissues or something on there for just a little bit of clutter. You know, this is up to my standards of decoration. I'm not really a clutter person, but we can move outside because we have a new swing set, which is super exciting. It has little flower boxes on it, which is an interesting choice, uh, but I like it. And we also have new bikes. Now the kids' bikes are only a hundred, which is super cool. Uh, so we could add one of those out here if we wanted to. And it also comes with a new adult bike, uh, which is 125. Only one new grown up bike, um, but lots of little kids' bikes with baskets or no baskets, which is fun. So I'm gonna stack these on the porch here. Now we do actually have a bit of money left. So if we really want to scooch up as close to that 17,000 mark as possible, uh, we could grab a planter, 
So that will get us really close. Also, we do still need a trash can, which I like putting outside the kitchen door if I can. It's just convenient, and it's not like there's a trash pickup day. And finally, the mailbox. Highly recommend turning on move objects for the mailbox as well, because then you could just put it right here, right on the sidewalk, and you don't have to stick it like way off the sidewalk. You know, to keep those pesky sims off your lawn. I'm going to move my lot because I want this to be more centered and feel like it's taking up a bit more of the space. Just gotta scooch that mailbox again. And now we can finalize with some terrain paint. The terrain paint is going to add a lot and it's free. So start with a dirt. I'm going to go with smarter starter soil as usual and put it halfway between the middle and the end on the softness side. I always like to paint dirt under my paths before I lay them. Uh, and then of course under the landscaping, including trees, under your foundation, and of course under any other structures. I like to sort of add little dirt tracks under the swing for kids to like drag their feet or whatnot. I think I'll add some gravel under the picnic table here. And for your fence, if it's along the ground, I would definitely put terrain paint under the whole thing. Uh, but this one is off the ground a bit, so I'm just going to put it around these sort of posts. Yes, this takes some additional time, but really the little bit of detail that it adds is, it just, it's so worth it. And then when I'm ready to add the gravel, I'll scooch it back down to about the middle of the softness area, bring the circle brush down, and then pick which one I want, and paint it in. There's a little three bedroom starter for the new Growing Together pack. Let's do a final tour. Like much of the world, we went with a sort of craftsman bungalow style. Um, now, a lot of the homes in this neighborhood are more craftsman suburban, where they have multiple stories, but to keep it a starter and skip having more expensive stairs inside, I just decided to go with one story today. Plus, I feel like there's always a demand for more one story built. So, craftsman bungalow inspired exterior and a little cottage interior. Now, why do I say cottage? Because the kitchen and dining space are combined traditionally with a bungalow. Um, you would have all three of these spaces be a bit more separate. However, I was struggling to stay under budget, shared this with the Discord, and they reminded me that I could just combine the kitchen and dining spaces. So if you'd like to help me figure out some problems with my builds in the future, uh, join the Discord, because you guys are insanely helpful. And then of course the bedrooms as well off to the side here. Now with it being a family pack and a new pack, I did want to add as many of those new sort of family inspired items as possible, so I grabbed a couple of the bikes and the swing set. The treehouse is a bit pricey, um, but if you skip the swing set and the bikes and the planters and the picnic table, you could probably fit it in instead. Uh, but that feels like something you'd really sort of work up to in the game. I don't know. I like it better this way, basically. And that's what I have for you guys today. This lot will be available as a furnished version as well as just a shell on the gallery. All of those details are in the video's description down below. If you want to learn more about the Craftsman bungalow style, I did a full build like a nerd tutorial back in October, I think it was. So I'll link that here. And if you're looking for another easy to build Craftsman inspired home that would be great for a slightly larger family, I recommend checking out the Foursquare Craftsman. As you can tell, I really love this style. But with all that being said, thank you so much for building with me today, and I look forward to building with you again very, very soon. Bye!